Charlie LaDuff is a reporter unlike any you've probably ever seen. He worked for the New York Times, won a Pulitzer Prize, then left and began working for Fox Television in Detroit, and then traveled the country telling stories about Americans. His reporting style, well, it's memorable. Somebody moved in her house, and this is her lawyer, and they want him out. I'm coming to move in. You are? Yeah, I got the keys. Can I get in? No, sir. But I have, uh, I have the deed here. Too. You do? Yeah, here's the deed. Here's the okay. check. All right. Here's the deed, and I got permission from the landlord. He pays taxes on somebody else's number. He's never going to get it. That's what he says. He's not a criminal. He's raising a good family, believes in God. I don't know. He's here. He ain't going. Va a salir a Mexico? No, no. He ain't going either. The new food is supposed to save the county $138,000 a year. I wouldn't feed this to my dog. Here, kitty, 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 kitty. How oh. did it used to work? It used to look like when you went to a wedding and got a buffet. I won't touch oh. that. You won't eat that? <laughs> Don't ask me. Why don't we just feed him cat food? It's only 50 cents a can at the store. Retail, full of animal byproducts, and... It's really not bad. LaDuff isn't afraid to hold politicians and other people in power accountable. You make okay. a promise to the American people that you'll have a federal inquiry into how the federal government handled this corporation. Well, this is a federal in inquiry into how the federal government handles the situation. That's, no, no, that's, that's solid. That's Excuse solid. I, 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 no, I, let go ahead and roll it. Oh, what? okay. What's no, the problem? Thank you. Thank you. You can't answer? No. You, you, we, no, no, you work no, for no, us. No, no, no. I don't work for Fox. You work for no, Fox. I, I'm no, I'm an American citizen. I'm an American I'm citizen. An American citizen from, from Detroit, Michigan. Yeah, yeah. I don't like what you did with the company. Neither does anybody out well, there. Well, then you're not asking a question. Okay. Goodness. You just came here. Will you be asking American. GM to pay the American taxpayer? Back. That's answered. a question. Nah. And in his latest project, he's written a book called S Show. The country's collapsing and the ratings are great. And joining me now from his home in Detroit, Charlie LaDuff. Charlie, I've been looking forward to this interview. We spoke on the phone the other day. You know, I've been following your work for quite a while. Give me the basic premise of this book. First of all, don't tell my wife we're smoking it. <laughs> She'll never know. <laughs> well, <let's... laughs> okay. The premise of the book is, hey, can I, it's, a, it's, a, it's the internet, it's, a, it's a show. The country's collapsing, and the ratings are great. And I don't think I have to explain it. I think the good people of East Idaho know exactly what I'm talking about. So the book begins with me and Roger Ailes' office, the creator of Fox News. And uh, the precursor to this book was Detroit, an American autopsy, in which I posit that Detroit is not a freaky outlier. Detroit is the epicenter of what's going on in America. It's very spectacular here, but it's the epicenter. Roger Reels, let's me take a couple of uh, camera guys and we go around the country. We start out in the North Dakota oil fields. We thought we should do work. We're in the South, in uh, Alabama, about why a Southern man wouldn't want a union. So that's about globalization. Then we're in Detroit, you know, we're doing race. We set it up and by the end of this thing, it's just a, a machine gun of what does Ferguson have in common with the Bundy Ranch, which has in common uh, with the, the border in Texas, with Flint, which is Take your pick. Everybody's angry with government. They don't trust government. Pick your level of government, whether it be the local police or Washington or the state house or your mayor. People are upset they've been sold out. They're, I don't think, if I know Americans, and I do know them well, they're not afraid for themselves. They're pretty rugged. We're pretty tough people. It's the kids. It's the kids. It's the kids. What are we leaving the kids? So you mentioned in the book, I think it was Ferguson where you went to, and you mentioned a, a news anchor who swooped in, had his scarf on, stood behind a safe zone, did his show, left. Meanwhile, you're out there as tear gas is being sprayed and rioters are throwing things. And there's a lot of people that say that the news just doesn't get it. The networks don't get it. The the papers don't get it. You worked in media. Do they, do they get it? Well, yeah, you know, the book's also about being a guy, a member of the media, and looking at it and going, holy f what's going on here? Um, yeah, man, I worked for the New York Times, the left. I've worked for Fox News, the right. Uh, I exist in the middle. And I don't want to call myself the media. I want to call myself the press. Old school, you know, like you're down with the people. 
I write about cops because I'm in a car with them. If I'm going to write about drugs, I'm going to be under the overpass with the human being that's now turned into a skeleton. I, there's no, I curry no favor. I go to no Washington White House correspondent parties, no birthday parties for the chief of police. I think it was proven to the American people that yes, you know, generally speaking, not, there's some brave people in the press, man, by the way, you know, but we're kind of out to lunch. We didn't, oh my God, we didn't know the, the depths of the discontent in America. We should probably get out there. Well, have you seen them get out there? Have, have you seen more reporters writing about recording everyday life in America? Or are you seeing the split screen on TV has turned into an octagon, right? And one desk of arguing people, I actually saw this once, is two desks of arguing people with the host or correspondent walking back and forth. And I said, none of this has anything to do with anything because it's an opinion derived from one reporter doing a story and then the internet caught it and everybody's writing their opinion, but nobody really knows. And how do you do that as a reporter, as a member of the press? How do you get down with people and what they're doing? That I'm not gonna tell you how, that's why there's tens of thousands of us doing this job. That, that's what's great about being able to look for different writers and different filmmakers. You know, East Idaho News. That's my source for news in East Idaho. <laughs> great. So, <laughs> so you did TV for, for what, 10 years? Something like that? Uh, I did TV for six. Okay. I did TV for 10 years. You say in your book more than once, TV news is the worst type of journalism, the worst type of news. Why do you say that? Okay, well, do you agree? Uh, I, probably, yes. Some forms <laughs> okay. of it. Your forms of it, I liked. The fact that you, you. you could take a, a really serious issue that's complicated that most people would say that's not a TV story. Put that in the paper somewhere. You could take it and make it interesting so that a person halfway across the country would watch an eight-minute package about the Flint pipes and Detroit corruption. Uh, but the majority of stuff on television, it's, it's a waste. It's crime, crime, crime. We talked about this the other day. Crime, 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 crime. But why is it crime, 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 crime? Or why is it Trump, 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 Trump? Simple. You can crank that biscuit out in 20 minutes. like making a melted cheese sandwich, I said in the book. Murder... It's not that murder sells, and it does, but it, not to that level, right? It's because you can do it in 20 minutes, right? The producer says, go out there, there's crime scene tape, there's a body, there's a chief of police quote, there's a woman at the end of the block, give you tears, said he had so much life you know, ahead of him, it's senseless, and you flip it. Because increasingly with cutbacks and lack of resources, reporters are asked to do so much more. You know, they're, they're doing two, three stories, and what can you, you got to drive to get there, you got to set the camera up, you got to get the quotations, you got to get the background, you got to edit it, and you got to get it on the air. So, that's why you get it. I looked at TV like a consumer. I don't watch local TV news. I think it was crap before I even did it, but I remember sitting there with some hoity-toity filmmaker in Detroit who was redoing, like, Homer's the Odyssey in our in our ruined wasteland, right? He's going to update Homer in the streets of Detroit. And I said, yeah, I took a job. I'm, we're at a restaurant. I look up at the TV, the local news is on. And uh, I said, yeah, I took a job with that. And he you know, just snorts in his ice cubes and says, why would you do that? I said, because that, my friend, is the mass medium. That's, you can make that art and regular people will watch it because I'm more interested in regular people because I've never read Homer's Odyssey. And nor am I going to read Homer's Odyssey. The language is too hard. So you take TV and you have to know this, that people are not stupid. People are really smart, man. People know what the media does because we've actually opened the doors. See behind you? See all the stuff going on? You've showed them. They, they know how we do the news. So they are ignorant to some facts. Our job is to make them aware of the facts because they're not stupid. So when, when I got in, they would say, nobody understands numbers, don't put numbers on TV. I said, what do you mean don't put numbers on TV? 20 million minus 10 million is not zero, right? When, when the government's telling you 20 million minus 10 million is zero, you know you've got problems. So the people I worked with that are in the book, Bob Shadowbauer, 
Matt Phillips, the, the editors and the, and the photographers and the reporters and the thinkers and the brave guys and the livers and the drinkers, you know what I mean? Um, Matt would do stuff like put 20 million flashing up there. Then he would put 10 million flashing up there. And then he put a zero with a line to it and say, does not equal zero. And, and then everybody gets it. Yeah. And then Troy can come alive to Idaho. Michigan comes alive to Idaho, right? Flint, you have such things going on in your state. It, it's, it's not particularly the story. It's the idea of the story that people can relate to. Because remember, it's people. It's people behind this. You did a story where you ate cat food to talk about the horrible Meals on Wheels uh, food that was happening. You squatted on a squatter. I think that was like number one on Reddit, or it, it broke some record. Um, you've worn bathrobes. I mean, you took a disabled man to get fast food. There's some some yeah. some reporters that say, well, you make it all about you or you're sensationalizing it. I, I don't agree with that, but... Uh, what's your response to them? Who? Other journalists, other TV people. Who? Okay. I, I don't know who they are. I'm not working for them. I'm working for you. So, um, say what you want to, man. The point gets made, you know, like, I did a story eating cat food because there was a bunch of corruption going on in Wayne County, Michigan here. And, um, big severance checks were being given out. In the government, the government was giving out severance checks. You, you don't get a severance check. Like uh, uh, Flynn, Michael Flynn, right? Trump's uh, first national security guy. Did he get a severance check? You don't get a severance check. But we were giving him. One of these severance checks equaled the amount uh, that was cut from Meals on Wheels for the invalids and the elderly. So let's go see what they're, we're feeding our old people and our sick people, right? Because you and I, brother are the ones that pay that, right? We're the ones. So, if a guy's getting gruel that was uh, packaged down in uh, you know Jackson, Mississippi from a, a, a firm that specializes in prison food, and I, we're giving that to, to a guy with cerebral palsy, can't move, oh, come on. So, people in the business want to say, you put yourself in too much? We're talking about it now, aren't we? That was number one all time on Reddit, wasn't it? So, point made. Ball's in your court. Tell me what you're working on. And change yeah. happened. You instituted change, didn't you, because of that story? I'm going to leave that to you. I mean, look, I'm just working. I'm just working. I'll leave it to you. I wrote a book. You can see how the, the book's good, man. I'm very proud. It's the best one I wrote, and I've written four. And it was just right on time. Before there was even a Trump on the scene, we began, you know? I'm proud of the record that, that I'm, I'm making. Uh, I'm trying to make sense of this country for people alive now who feel it like it doesn't make any sense. And trust me when I tell you what you think is probably true. Just don't get conspiratorial about it. You know what I mean? It's, it's real basic. There's the rich. There's the government that's been purchased by the rich. And you're kind of an afterthought. That's what I saw. And the media... It's kind of hoity-toity, man. It's kind of hoity-toity. It's kind of like flyover country. The closest thing to celebrity are the TV reporters. I think we owe the people much more than we're giving them. And even in, in an era of cutbacks and all this, you, you, I would stay up late at night in my basement, you know, maybe a beer here and a pack of cigarettes, and I will read these contracts, these spreadsheets, these executive summaries, these statistical analysis, the... Your Pew Foundation reports, right? That part's for free. That's so I know exactly what I'm talking about, right? I know exactly where I'm going. And when I go to see the man or the woman, you know, when I see him, I'm not getting some empty sound bite. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Can you explain to me, sir, why? And then be satisfied with it. An empty answer. I will not do that to my countrymen, my neighbors, or my family. So I don't care what they say. So you brought up Trump. You actually threw your name in to be his vice president. You told yeah. him. And he, at a press, at a press conference. Said. It's on video. Uh, yeah. you, and didn't you predict that Trump, you know, before he won and before he was big, that he had a shot? And sure enough, he's the president. Two weeks into it, I'm at a press conference, and I said, sir, I think you could win. And he swelled up like a thirsty sponge. You see this guy? 
This guy got a lot of credibility. And I said, you should think about vice presidential material. I don't really think you're saying it right. What you're saying, I, I think, is going to resonate. Let me give you my resume. And he says, what, you want to be vice president? I go, yeah, why not? And uh, then he stripped me of my credibility. said, I used to have credibility. And he says, where's this guy from? For me, Trump was a prop. He knew it was a show. He was very good at it. Uh, I kind of dug it because, you know, the, the run-up to the election is the worst reality show ever. It's so puffed up and self-important. It's boring. I mean, you know, agricultural credits in Iowa. What's that got to do with, like, you know, cars in Detroit? But wherever he, he would go, we would be there. Wherever we would go, he would be there. And it was starting to get really funny. But... When it looked like he actually was going to be the nominee, then I got pulled off it. I think because I was, you know, you know those debates, the presidential debates, and there's the spin room afterwards, mm -hmm. right? The spin room. Yeah. What reporter in his right mind will go into a room to be spun? I'm trying to unspin it. So what we were doing, me and Matt, because what we were doing was sanctuary cities in Los Angeles, and I'd gone to Ronald Reagan's, Reagan's funeral, and I know all the guys taking care of his uh, crypt uh, came here illegally. I just, the, the irony was sweet. So we knew already what we were doing. So Matt and I, he's got the camera. I grab his lapels and we're spinning in the spin room like this, spinning in the spin room, <laughs> just doing a 360. And we're on all the major networks because we're in the middle of the spin room. Yeah. Spinning. You know, my, my Twitter's going off and everything. My mom's laughing. And I didn't handle it with the augustness that, you know, is required of the situation. In the book, you make a lot of true points about the media, about politics. Why did you leave TV? Uh, you know, you got to get the book. There's a lot of, you know, the reasons we're talking about. Um, plus, I, I put everything into it. You know, I, I put I put my body into it. I put my emotions into it. Um, you know, I mean, we get set upon in Ferguson, you know, because we're walking into the place where they're looting it. You know, we're not doing a telephoto lens because... We'll read the book, you'll see why. Because there's great human beings, great Americans in those places, right? Where it's just like a national tragedy. But there's, we the people, the majority of us, right? The, 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 the doers and the getting out with life livers. We rule this place, you know what I mean? And we do get along and I refuse to be part of it. Another thing that happened is a cop I knew got dropped. He, got, he died, got killed on the job. Great cop, never had a discipline uh, abuse complaint in his 20 years in Detroit. And he was the, you know, special ops guy going to get the worst of the worst. And one of the worst shot him. And his wife, I stay away from widows after 9-11 because I covered ground zero for the New York Times for a whole year at a firehouse. And I know what reporters are in moments of tragedy. They can be emotional acetone that he rose to the last bit of glue binding that family together. So I stayed away, but she reached out to me because she wanted to say something to the people of this country, which is she forgave the man that killed her husband because if he knew what he had taken from the two little boys and her, she's quite certain he wouldn't have done it. And then she called for more love. This was just unbelievable to me after the discontent and the hate and the, the burnings and the, the rioting that, that she would, and the death, that she would say that. And then I went to his funeral and there's the mayor spouting bull crime statistics over the man's casket. The chief of police giving him a posthumous promotion from sergeant to captain for the TV because the widow still receives sergeant's benefits. Because of Detroit's bankruptcy, the children do not have health care. And the worst of all of it, because of the bankruptcy, this funeral full of pomp and circumstance and politicians, they sent her the bill. He died in the line of duty serving the city, and they sent the widow the bill. So, if there's a war on cops, the snipers were coming from everywhere, right? The same with how the inner city's being looted. The same like the, the middle class, the shrinking middle class has to float all of it. Right? We have so much in common and we can't see it. And I need a break from a medium that spins discontent that's really not down with being down.
So I left so I could have a break, reconfigure what I'm doing, and write this really awesome book. And I don't mean to be full of myself. I think this is a really awesome book, and I'm proud of it. It's a good book. I'm about halfway through. Um, it's, it's fascinating, and I've seen a lot of the stories, which, by the way, if you haven't seen the stories, we'll put some YouTube links below. <laughs> You left television, I left television, I moved to an online platform. Uh, there's always good stories in East Idaho to tell. Yeah, here's, I was thinking about that because I, for, you know, an hour or two, I was just noodling around your website. Yeah, you guys get it. You, like, look, you got the, you got the, the, the core down, I think. Here's, here's a critique. You have the core down of what journalism is, right? It's, it's the public safety sheet. Cops and fire and reporters, they're like cousins, right? Yeah. What I could do for you, or, or what somebody can do, is somebody makes a beat, a beat of the county government, the city government, right? And instead of writing these long, hairy, thumb-sucking pieces, you make them short, right? You make them staccato, bah, 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 bah. and you can write every day or two or three times a week, which sets the agenda. You know what I mean? What are people talking about? Where's the money? Here's what you do. Take a look at the biggest public works project going. What's the biggest public works project going in your region? Probably road construction right now. Take a look at it. It's taking forever, isn't it? Always does. Always does. How come? You know, in Michigan, they're, it's third world. I, I saw better roads in, in Iraq. I'm not joking. And I covered Iraq. I saw better roads in Iraq. And our money went to fix their roads. And my roads look like hell. And when they're tearing them up, I noticed the cement is this thick. Yeah. Okay. In Germany, it's this thick, mm -hmm. right? They also get paid for longevity. That's part of the that's part of the bid. So it sounds boring, but there's always something there. There's something there with the water. There's something there with, you know, it's politics, man. Somebody got to look out for the people's business, you know. It's Without look and stop yelling at the press, because a lot of us, I'm an independent. You know what I mean? I'm an independent. I'm not a Democrat or Republican, never will be. I'm an independent. So I tell my wife she wants to uh, donate to a judge here, right? And I'm like, go ahead. Don't put it in my name. I never gave a, a penny, but I, I always vote. Uh, I, I give I give my contributions to society by looking into what they're talking about. So, yeah, I would, you know what? I think I'd like to. You're working in a hot dog joint, right? Yeah, a diner, yes. A diner. How's that going? Yeah, look at this here. Can you see? Can't get the cement off my hands. I'm doing the cement work, the foundation, oh. um, uh, the lights and all that, the electric. So it's cool because guess what? When I left, I've always had a job, you know, as a reporter. And I didn't calculate in losing health care. Didn't, didn't think about it. Now, as a reporter, we're supposed to be down with the health care issue, right? And I can tell you about the rate of inflation and how many people are covered and, and the exchange, and it's very expensive, very expensive. But I could never tell you what it felt like to have your child exposed to chance. That my, my child, should she get sick, you know, God willing, that doesn't happen. Um, what would I do? So I'm not waiting for the government to give me something. I go to work. What's wrong with that? You know what I mean? What's wrong with that? But now I know how it feels. It makes me a better person, makes me a better citizen and neighbor, makes me a way better reporter. I now know that. And then I also just did a nice expose on the county executive and his personal attorney who signed for the county executive's mortgage. Mm. And then the attorney goes around and gets a no bid contract on a bullshit county jail deal that we've already lost $400 million on. And his personal attorney was the deputy mayor of Kwame Kilpatrick who went to prison. And so you get it? Like, I feel like a complete man. I work with my hands. I work with my mind. I stand up to power, right? I kneel to God and I take care of my family. I feel pretty good. Could the money be better? Sure. But it ain't always about the money. Yeah. All right. The name of the book. Tell everybody the name of the book. Here, let me show it to you. Yeah, there you go. S, show. the country's collapsing and the ratings are great. Yes, they are. Charlie Ladoff, thanks for talking with us.